Okay, and we're live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode number five of the Global Networking Show, and thanks for joining us here today. Andy? And, and thanks for, for joining us uh, at the weekend if you're watching us live. Um, if you are watching live, please join in the show. Uh, you can ask questions using the Twitter hashtag, which is hashtag GNET show. You can ask questions on YouTube or on Google Hangouts. We'll do our best to look for those uh, and, and bring your questions into the debate when we can. And if we can't get to them during the show, then we will come back to you and answer any questions at any time uh, once the show has been aired. Today, Andy and I have been joined by two guests who, who are going to address a pretty uh, controversial topic from time to time, and that is, who networks better, men or women? And do they network in a different way, and who makes the, the better networker of the two? Andy? Well, our first guest, um, as usual, we, we, we've got a different technological hiccup every single month on this as we get used to, to Google Hangouts. And, and our first guest is joining us via Skype at the moment while her plugins try and plug in. Um, and she's been trying to get on air now for about 25 minutes to join us. So she may join us in person, and we certainly hope so at some point during the show. But in the meantime, she's on Skype. Uh, it's Helen Nicholson. Helen is a director of the South African uh, based the networking company uh, and she's the author of the book um, Networking How to Get Your Black Belt in Business Success. Uh, she's also uh, a regular columnist in uh, South Africa's Star newspaper. Now I first uh, got uh, introduced to Helen uh, probably uh, in the last six or eight months although we've both been aware of each other for a while and that was when I asked one of my South African colleagues who the number one person in South Africa was for networking and, and her name uh, came up. When we talked about her being a guest on the show, um, she explained that a lot of her work has been in the past has been with, with women and helping them network more effectively uh, and with more confidence. Uh, and the differences between men and women is something that Helen has studied in a lot of detail. And I'll be uh, introducing uh, Hazel Walker. Hazel is uh, a very good friend. Uh, Hazel a number of years ago was actually a stay-at-home mom and uh, pretty unfamiliar with the business. Uh, she took over her husband's uh, alien, uh, her alien husband's insurance business and uh, really built, built that organization. Uh, she's now an executive director for Central Indiana uh, for BNI and uh, has just recently been selected as the National Franchise Development Director for BNI in Australia. So she spends half of her time uh, in the United States, in, in Indianapolis, and half of her time in Australia, and some other percentage, let's see, half and half, you're probably, that's full, but some percentage within there uh, travels around the world. She's now in Germany. She's speaking to us from, I think, Heidelberg. Um, so she's asked to speak uh, for BNI and other organizations uh, all over the world. Uh, I, I love Hazel. She invited me to <clears throat> participate, her and Frank Raffley invited uh, me to participate in a book called Business, Networking, and Sex. Not what you think. Uh, it's about the very topic that we have today, how to, uh, how to network with people of the opposite gender. And uh, uh, writing this book with Hazel was a blast. Uh, we really uh, enjoyed uh, working on it together, and I think this is going to be a, a great interview today. Uh, Hazel is not only an expert in this field and the self-proclaimed queen of networking, which I think is probably true, um, but she, she's a lot of friend, uh, a lot of fun, good friend, and uh, a great writer and speaker, Hazel Walker. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to see you again, Hazel. We Hazel and I met a, a few years ago now um, in Bristol in the UK at a referral institute conference, and, and congratulations on your new role. That's a, a lot of travel to take in, particularly as you're now in Europe as well. So you're, you're really getting uh, around the world, which is great to see. Um, so Hazel, let, let me start um, with a question for you, and then it'll be interesting to hear Helen's take on this as well. Uh, in, in December, in, uh, uh, there was a new study published which found fundamental differences in the ways that neurological pathways are connected in men's brains uh, and in women's brains. And, and the, the, the scientists behind the study believe that it explains why men and women 
demonstrate different aptitudes and skills and abilities. So the study suggested, for example, that men are better at motor skills, such as reading maps, which is the, the, the classic example, um, while women are more instinctive and empathetic. So that raises the natural question, you know, what can we read into this in terms of how we see how men network and how women network? And, and does perhaps this study, this, uh, this idea that men's brains and women's brains are wired in different directions, uh, does that shed a lot of light in the way that the two genders interact in different ways at networking events and elsewhere? It, yes, it does. My bigger question would be why they felt they needed to spend the money to do that study. <laughs> and it, it's pretty obvious from the survey that we did of 12,000 men and women, um, we just go about things differently. So whether it's because we're wired differently or we're nurtured differently, you know, there, it's always that conversation. Women definitely do it differently than men do. But what I want to be clear about is not, there is not one who's better at it than the other. There are some things women are really better at and men are better at different things. Come together, if they learn to bridge that gap, both of them can be equally successful. So, so what would you say are, are, are men's major strengths at networking? Guys are really good at going for the deal. They're very transactional. They go for the business right away. Where women have a tendency to really want to go for the relationship. First. And that shows up in how they have conversation and what's important to them. Women want to get to know the person before they talk business. Men just want to go straight for the business. They listen and resonate. So. It causes a little bit of conflict at networking events, but once they learn the difference and how to approach each other, it can be very dynamic. Now, Hazel, I'm I'm shocked because uh, I think this is the first time that I've ever heard you say that men and women are both are both really good at networking and not also slip in there. Uh, the results of our study, which showed that one gender is in fact more successful uh, at networking than the other gender, you usually take every opportunity well, to you, point that out, especially if Frank is on the stage. Ivan, women are really good at building the relationship. They come to working and building the relationship. They absolutely, are hands down better. There's no no question about that. But men are better at asking for the business than women are. No, no doubt, and that's, and that's, that's I have exactly to teach what we And that's exactly what we found in the study. However. Between men and women, we also found that um, one gender generated more business than another gender did as a result of their networking efforts, and that was, of course, uh, women. Women scored a higher percentage uh, of their business as a result of their networking efforts than men did. So, um, you know, I'm, when I'm asked that question, I, I say women uh, women are doing it better in terms of networking because it's really about building relationships and not right. just transactions. But but each come with their strengths. So so Helen Helen, what 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 have you found in South Africa? Is it the same sort of results that you would expect to see? Yeah, I think it's important um, to segment, uh, you know, the the different markets because I think women and men obviously do network differently, as we've all established, and all the research indicates that. But I think that in social situations and business situations. There's a difference, and I think women are very good social networkers. When I mean social, I mean more in their personal lives. Women will share information with each other as to where the best gynecologist is, where the best schools are for their children. They're, they're real mavens, and um, they're hubs of information that will make their life easier, and they pass that on to their friends. Where's the next shoe sale happening? Um, what I found, and uh, the research here in South Africa backs this up, is where the big difference becomes, um, and it becomes relevant in women's careers, is in the corporate world, is that is where women are losing out. And um, because they lack that transactional ability and they're actually not a, a significantly aware of the power of networking, you'll often find, and there was a big study done at a financial institution um, here in South Africa, where they looked at men and women at quite a senior level in the organization and they wanted to find out what was happening because for some reason the men were overtaking the women. And they found out that on average, um, uh, the average guy would have kind of 50 to 70 people just within that bank that he could pick up the phone to and ask a question, whereas women only had between 11 and 15 people. 
So at the end of the day, networking is a numbers game. So if you, if I've got 11 to 15 people and my male colleagues got 50 to 70, clearly he's going to get places for, um, faster than I am. It's interesting you say that, and, and I'm very pleased you brought out the difference with the corporate world because I do a lot of talks for women's networks in, in corporate organizations. And I always quote um, what you know the studies that, that Ivan and, and Hazel did and, and what they found in terms of that difference between men being transactional uh, and women being relational. And um, in, in business networking and sex, uh, uh, Ivan and Hazel talk about the VCP process that you, you move from visibility to credibility and then profitability um, and there's a wonderful bit in the book where they say that what men do is go from visibility to profitability and worry about the credibility later and correct me if I've got this wrong uh, guys but no, that's, no, that's no. Um, whereas women will go visibility credibility and just get stuck there and when I give the talks, I quote that from the book, and I, I demonstrate that, and I show what men do is this and the big jump. What women do is this, and they go, credibility, 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 and get stuck. And all of the women in the audience laugh because they all recognize it. And I've never had anyone in any of those audiences turn around and say, oh, you're totally wrong there. They all recognize it. They all see it. Um, so it was with that in mind, it was interesting to hear what Ivan had to say about the findings that women were earning more from their networking uh, practices than men. So it, it, just, I, just on that, um, Andy, I think that you know, I've, and, and this is not um, research based, but more anecdotal, mm. is I think women entrepreneurs are often very good networkers, and it's because they have to. Whereas women in the corporate world um, have not keyed on to the same fact. So I think it's even segmenting, you know, the corporate world further down, because entrepreneurs generally have to ask for business and they have to network, otherwise, they will go out of business. So I think female entrepreneurs probably are ahead of their corporate female counterparts in that category. Helen, you bring up a, a great point because our study uh, was basically entrepreneurs, salespeople, business professionals um, yeah. um, who run their own company, and, and that's very different than um, uh, the corporate world. So you're identifying, a, I think, a, a key difference. Uh, I, in interviewing one of the entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial women uh, for the book, she said something very interesting to me because I was talking to her about the glass ceiling. And she said, you know, I, as an entrepreneur, a female entrepreneur, uh, I really don't look at it as a glass ceiling in, in my situation because if I were working in a corporation, I would. But in my situation, I don't view it as a glass ceiling as much as a retractable sunroof because uh, um, I control my own destiny running my own business where I didn't control it as much when I was working for someone else. And so I think you bring up a really valid point. There are some big differences between the corporate world and entrepreneuring with um, men and women. So, so Hazel, can I ask you at this point then, how can uh, a woman in a corporate environment learn from what uh, women in an entrepreneurial environment are able to do? Uh, I think that's the biggest question I then get is, how can we be more comfortable asking for help? How can we be more transactional in our approach? Well, I... I actually coach several executive women and one of our topics often is what they need to be doing as far as networking goes and they don't see um, really the value of networking they're working eight to five and then they're going home and taking care of families and that's what they see as their corporate role where men are often in the corporation they're working eight to five but afterwards they're going out to do other things with their, their male counterparts. So women have to find ways to manage their time inside the corporation and as a business entrepreneur they have to find a way to manage their time to be able to do that. A lot of the women I coach do not understand, they did not understand the value of creating a network and building relationships in a corporation because they have a clear definite path. There's home and work. And what I, what I teach them is they have to build relationships with all of the people, not just in their corporation, but across corporations. They need to know who the people are in other organizations that do what they do in the event that they need to shift corporations. So it's, it's definitely a training because men understand that they just do it. Women have to learn how to do that in the corporation. So that's 
That is a big topic I have with corporate women. They didn't see the value of it to begin with. So it, mentoring is important for them. Do you think that's something that is changing? I, I, I remember about five years ago, I went to an event called Women in Technology in London. Uh, 200 women and one one man and, and did the bravest thing in my life and I asked a question of the panel and, and after apologizing for not being female and not being in technology I, I, I asked the question is it different for a woman uh, to network in a corporate environment than it is uh, in, in another sorry than for a man to do so and one by one each one of those women shot me down in flames. We don't network, we don't do that, we, we don't, don't play games. Now, this was despite the fact that every talk they'd given, every answer up to that point, had been about networking, but they hadn't defined it as such. Now, that was about, okay. five, years, that was about five years ago. About a year later, I was at another event for a Women's Network in Morgan Stanley with about 150 women there. And one of the speakers asked the audience, how many of you, and it was primarily women again, how many of you think networking is essential to your career? And almost everyone put their hand up. And I felt in a year there had been a sea change in approach. Now, there's still a long way to go because that's 150 people out of however many work for Morgan Stanley in London alone. Um, and, and the women's networks here are thriving and elsewhere. You know, I was with, with uh, one of them in New York last month, um, and they're growing, but there's still a long way to go because it's still a small proportion, perhaps, of the women that work for those companies that attend those events. But are you seeing a change? Part of the issue with, with it is redefining the word network because when a woman sees networking, they think that's running around doing a whole lot of stuff. But when I teach them, their network are the people they build relationships with. That It's not about going to lots of events. It's about building deeper relationships with the people they already know and getting to know more people to add, one, two, three at a time, versus 50 new business cards. Once they get that, it's like an aha for them, and they start yeah, doing it, then they get it. I agree with Hazel entirely. I think that networking as a word has had a bad rap. Um, you know, in the sense that a lot of people are associated with schmoozing, they see it as being manipulative, they see it as air kissing, running around, you know, as you say, handing out business cards and doing spray and pray networking and all those other awful things. Whereas when they understand that networking is about mutually beneficial business relationships and, and they observe other people who do it authentically and in a real way and how that benefits their careers, then I think women are much more likely to buy in. And I don't think that's just a woman and man thing. I think you'll find a lot of men then buy into the concept because, uh, you know, often they actually share that view of networking. Yeah, I, I think I would agree with you with that. I've always joked that if I could find another word for networking, that's where I would make the fort mm -hmm. my fortune, one that would be accepted. Yeah. Uh, Ivan, what's your take on this? Well, I, I tell you, we were talking about uh, some of the differences, differences between men and women, and I thought uh, it might be interesting to talk uh, for a minute, Hazel, uh, about um, how men and women introduce themselves, um, because uh, we were shocked at just the way they introduce. At least I was shocked at just the way they introduce themselves. Uh, I'm not sure you were shocked about it, Hazel, but it was an epiphany for me um, that women complained, and maybe you can talk about this. Women complained that men tend to introduce themselves like a resume and men kind of complain that women uh, tend to get off on a social introduction as opposed to just focusing on business and I had never really thought about that until um, we had seen that through our through our book. You want to talk about that? Yeah, women, and this is where you have to bridge the gap between the two. When a man introduces himself to another man, they're listening to bullet points they're listening in resume and they don't have a problem with talking about their goals and their accomplishments and who they work for and who they know and how long they've done that. They're okay with that. But when a man does that with a woman, she's automatically put off. She's like, why is he, why is he bragging? Why does he always have to brag? On the other hand, she will start asking personal questions like, well, how did you get into business that you're in? What do you love about what you do? She's looking for common ground. She's looking for a way to find common ground with him and figure out what he loves. So I teach women quite often, if you're speaking to a man and he's giving you his resume, instead of saying, hi, I sell mascara, or hi, I sell cosmetics, or whatever, 
talk about what you've achieved, talk about the goals you're trying to reach. And then I teach guys, instead of doing all of that with women when you're introducing yourself, take the time and ask her some questions about her business. She has a, an emotional connection to her business most of the time. And she wants to talk about why she loves it, why she does what she does, how she got started, and then she'll give you all of the rest of this stuff over time. So she's, again, looking for the relationship. He's looking for, is she important enough to put into my network? I think it's also important that, you know, women often undersell themselves. And exactly what you were saying, I actually have a friend and colleague who heads up an enormous division at one of the retailers here. And when she's asked what she does, she says, I sell lipsticks. When in actual fact, she heads up, you know, 250 people and runs a very serious division. And I've said to her on many occasions, that doesn't advance your personal brand. No. Okay, so with that in mind, I mean, obviously there are shifts. I think for for both genders in terms of the way we introduce ourselves and the, and the, you know and the way we interact at networking events. What do men have to bear in mind to start off with um, if they're approaching a woman at a networking event? Not just in terms of asking about her business, but general demeanour, approach, and yes, conversation points as well. Helen, how about you for that? I think um, you know women operate on a system of emotional deposits and withdrawals. I, and I mean, obviously, we're generalizing here, but generally, that is the way women build relationships. So, in other words, get to know me, and then you can sell something to me, whether it's an idea or a product. So, men need to keep that in, and bear that in mind when they, they meet women, and they need to build relationships, and they need to get to know who that person is, because that ultimately is how a trust is built, and that's how women buy. Um, you can't, um, you know, I say it's, it's almost the um, business version of foreplay. Uh, you know, get to know someone. Um, you know, without having anyone that stands. And, and I think that's good advice for anyone, men or women, talking to anyone. Is it? Uh, with even the proviso, don't don't sell to the people at any point. Sell through them rather than to them, and and yeah. let them yeah. let them buy from you if they want to. If I can jump in, I, I agree completely. And one of the things that we found in uh, business networking and sex, uh, in the survey that we did, was that if you take gender out of it and you just look at transactional approaches to networking versus relational approaches to networking. The people who focused on building the relationship first and then uh, doing business uh, did better. They scored better in terms of the percentage of business they generated than those who focused on the transactional uh, aspect of business first. Let's do business, then we'll build a relationship. So uh, relational be transactional. The thing is that women tended to be more relational than men, and that's why women scored higher and did better in our survey of 12,000 people than the men did, because the women tended to be more relational. So that, that description that Helen just gave uh, really tracks with what we found, and it, and it tracks in a way that says both men and women can be relational in the way they do it, um, and there are men who are relational, but you really, uh, if you want to build your business through referrals, it, it's all about the relationship not the transaction. There was, yeah. a, there was a survey uh, Dale Spender uh, carried out in Australia some years ago and uh, what they did was uh, they tracked uh, activity at, at a networking event and then they asked the uh, participants for their views on, on their fellow delegates, their fellow participants and uh, what they found is that the men thought the women were uh, dominating the conversation but in fact, the women had less than half of the conversation. But what they were doing was they were asking questions and drawing the men in and getting the men to talk. So actually, their, their, their presence was more noted, but it was because they were drawing people in. It was the relationship things. They were asking questions. It's the Dale Carnegie um, famous saying about the, the sweetest sound to any, any man is the sound of his own name. And the women in that study were, were really demonstrating that. It's a similar thing. That relational approach has a much more powerful impact. Right. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and I think that goes across the board for all genders. I've been busy with research for my new book, and um, I've been interviewing some of the really good networkers here in Southern Africa and in Africa. And without exception, curiosity has come up time and time again as one of the biggest characteristics. And I do think. Um, that gives women an edge because I think often women do ask a lot of questions and they are genuinely curious and the, the more curious you are the better networker you're going to be. 
Okay, and Hazel, what's your you know, what's your take on this? Are you finding the same things? Right, uh, and I think one of the things um, for me, is, for instance, I have a very high sense of curiosity about everything in life, so I'm always asking questions, and I teach people all the time. He who asks the most questions is dominating the conversation. You control the conversation. So, um, but the the it's good to teach women this, but we have to teach men how to listen to women and answer some of those questions and to be more open and more relational so that they can both do well when they're doing knowing. One of my frustrations is I get hired by companies quite often to come in and work with their females. They want to do female leadership and get women to do more, better at the networking, but there's no men in the room. And I say to them all the time, I can't just train one side of the room both sides of the room have to be taught how to do this. So men need to learn to ask those questions and be curious about what it is she wants to do. If he is and she, he shows genuine interest, she's going to connect to him. And when a woman gives you a referral, it's usually a good referral because they've taken the time. But if they don't know you, like you, and trust you, and you haven't taken the time, you're not likely to get business, connections, or introductions. I also think women need to look at the amount of words that they actually use. Um, you know, I, I've been involved in negotiation skills program for women, and I said to women, we talk too much, and often then the message gets lost. And um, I think that especially when you're meeting men around a boardroom table it, for the first time, you've got to be very aware of kind of bullet pointing your conversation and being powerful in your presence because that's how men engage with each other and that's how they listen. So, and I'm not saying women need to become like men. I'm just saying that we need to adapt our message when men are predominantly your target market. But we cannot do that to other women. It has to be how we show up with men. Because other women will be put off. Women get put off by women who are too strong also. Indeed. Indeed. And that's an interesting point because very often when I talk to women who go to entrepreneurs, women networking events, a lot of the stronger women I know are quite dismissive of them. And they, 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 they find that the talk is too relational. Uh, and it's not enough about business in the way that they would want. Um, and I wonder if it gets to that point that, that a lot of women, when they get together with each other, they the relational really does come out strongly, and you can't go in and take a masculine approach in that environment, and that's where sometimes some women might feel uncomfortable there. Yeah, and I think increasingly it's not you know women and men issue. I think it's more mas masculine versus feminine style of engaging and leading, and and that you know and eventually this woman and man line is going to blur even more with the new generation of especially men that are coming through. Okay, so I, I think you're absolutely right there, and I, I often am at pains to to stress that when I talk about men's approach and women's approach it is masculine and feminine rather than men and women sometimes and, and actually we're all a blend of, of both and it just depends to which strength uh, you know it comes out in each of us um, but I think that there has to be more awareness so with that in mind uh, if we look at the formal networking event arena, we've seen a huge growth in women's networking events in the last few years. I I know a lot of women who are very heavily involved in that sphere and uh, either running them or just as very active participants in them and swear by them. I equally know a lot of women who are very anti the whole idea of women's networking events. On the other hand, having run a national business network for eight years, I was aware of the struggles we had encouraging enough women to come along. And some of those groups were very male dominated and actually probably quite intimidating for a lone woman to come along to, to a meeting. So two questions wrapped up in this. The first is, are women's networking events, women only networking events, a positive thing? Uh, and where do they sit in the grand scheme of things? Uh, and secondly, is how do we redress the balance in more general networking events? And actually, I'd, I'd quite like to hear um, Ivan's take on this as someone who runs the world's biggest network. Uh, you know, how do you guys address this? Well, I think one of the things to understand um, is what what's the demographics of, of the country that you're in. Uh, and this was uh, pointed uh, out to me a number of years ago that if um, if 
25% of your audience uh, is one gender or one ethnicity, um, and you have 25% of your membership in that gender or uh, ethnicity, then you're actually doing a great job. And so you might walk into a networking event and see it uh, lopsided uh, with, with men in the room. But the real question is, is, is that indicative of what you see out in the environment, out in the, in the business world? And so um, just the, the mere fact, and, and by the way, we came up with this whole discussion as a result of us going into certain communities in the United States where we were look, looking for a more diverse ethnic uh, background. And we were really beating ourselves up because we did not have enough uh, people from that particular ethnicity and, um, and one of our directors who's really an expert in uh, diversity said why are we beating ourselves up you know this ethnicity is about although it's 40 percent of the community it's only about 10 percent of the business community and we have more than 10 percent of the business community uh, in our organization so these are the kinds of questions you really have to take a look at. Um, you, you want to be diverse, but you want to be diverse based on a, a real number, not just uh, you know what you see out in the public. And business people, it's a different percentage. Does that make sense? It, it makes sense. So let me ask you this question. I think it's a very good point. If um, in terms of women-only networks, um, it's a slightly different point, but in terms of women-only networks, are there BNI women-only networks, and would you would you host them? If not, would you hey, host me. them if someone asked? I uh, want to jump in here on that. Go ahead, Hazel. You have to know why women join networking groups. And they, their first thing is not to join a networking group for the business. They join networking groups for the support first. And business comes second. And that, and that includes B&I. When they come into a B&I group, they want to know, how am I going to be supported? The moment you can explain to them, they're going to get education, they're going to be supported by mentors. But support first, business is second. For men, business is first, support is second. So you got you got to understand. I think, and Hazel, you. <laughs> I think this is the first time you'll hear me say this, um, and, and, and it might be a little bit controversial. But I think over time, over time, women's uh, women-only networking organizations are going to become um, less and less important to women. And here's why I say that. A couple of good friends of mine, uh, Paul and Sarah Edwards. Uh, started a uh, quite a few years ago a working from home network. Uh, there, Paul and Sarah Edwards wrote the book uh, Work from Home, and it was really the seminal book on it. And after about five years, their organization, which got to be very large, started to decline. And when I asked them what was going on, they said, "Well, people identified themselves when they first started working from home as a home-based business. They were a home-based business, and there were a lot of issues with being a home-based business." But that after three, four, five years, they were a business. It was secondary that they happened to work from home, but they were a business. I see a time where women are, are so inculcated into the business community that it could very well be a, a fact of, hey, I'm a business person. I happen to be a female business person, but I'm a business person. And so I wouldn't be terribly surprised if you see in the future women's organizations being not – maybe a little less um, uh, involvement in those organizations as uh, there are now because women will see themselves as business people, not just women business people. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think of that, Hazel? I agree. Ivan, I absolutely agree with you. I think that um, there is going to be a time when they become less and less important. I, I think that they've had a role and they are playing a role, but in the future one would hope that it's not necessarily um, you know, necessary to only hang out with people of your own gender because everyone is networking up the storm really well. Helen, not only would I say women have played a role, I would say they have played an incredibly significant role because I really believe that networking organizations, the way they exist today, exist in, in uh, no small for no small reason uh, because of the relationship types of networking that women would do. Women were really about building the relationships. And B&I, I think, exists 
in, in a large part because of the kinds of organizations that I visited before I started BNI. And those organizations, uh, there were two all-female organizations, one of which I was a member of, uh, that I joined because it was all about building relationships and the transaction was secondary. Um, and one of them is the National Association of Women Business Owners. Uh, another one is a Women's Referral Service. Both of those organizations were all about relationships and I liked that model so much that I wanted to do something a little different and, and, and help create BNI. So I think women um, are really responsible for the women business organizations are responsible for the way networks exist today. Yeah, you know, I think the diversity of your network is one that I always say to people is a key success factor because if your network comprises people who are the same color as you, the same age as you, the same gender as you, and the same job or industry as you, then it's not a powerful network. You literally have to go out and find people who are different to you because that's what adds richness and depth to a network. And that's why, you know, if I was a woman, um, either corporate or entrepreneur, and I belong to a woman-only networking group, I think that's all. That's great, but I think there should, there should be other networking groups that I belong to as well to add to the richness. Because otherwise, I think it can become quite linear. I, I, I'd agree with you completely, Helen. And I, and I think that you know, taking into account Ivan's comments as well, we are starting to see a change. So there are some women-only networks that I'm aware of. There are other women's networks that welcome men but don't particularly market themselves to men. Um, but what I'm seeing more and more of is that women's networks are trying to move into something a little bit um, a little bit more inclusive of both genders. So, for example, one of my uh, one of the networks I work with a lot is the HSBC Balance Network. Now, uh, they're not balanced network in every territory, but increasingly they're going down that road. And the first ever meeting, uh, Birgit knew who who actually set it up, um, said, "If you're coming, you have to bring a guest of the opposite gender." So she had 50-50. 50% men, 50% women at the first event and they aim as much as possible uh, to to try and keep as much balance there as possible. Another um, women's network in, in, a, in a bank that I, I did the first two talks for them and they said please, and I'm hearing this more and more, make your talk as gender non-specific as possible because we want to encourage men to come along as well. And what they're seeing is that if they only have a women's only cluster if you like, they're not going to achieve as much because the men in those organizations aren't going to get the opportunity to buy into their aims. And actually I think what would be great to see in the corporate world is this move just towards internal networks rather than diversity based networks, just more opportunities for people within those organizations irrespective of gender, irrespective of sexual preference, irrespective of race, just to, to, to meet. Uh, and I think we're seeing a move towards that. Um, but I'm certainly still in favour of, of what they're doing with women's networks because they are empowering women to take more, you know, control of their own des destiny and be more confident that networking is a positive thing. You know, Andy, I take that one step further. I'm I'm not a big fan of women's leadership organisations. When I go into corporations and they want me to work with just the women to teach them to be leaders, who follows? I have, you know, the guys need to be in there to be good followers of the female leaders. Let's just have leaders, not women leaders or male leaders, but leaders of the organization. Good point. Yeah. Well, we're uh, we're going to be running out of time pretty soon. Uh, any last uh, comments or thoughts uh, that you've got on this uh, topic? Um, my last point is that I think when women have the mindset change to see themselves as a brand, that they are actually the brand, me, PTY Limited, or you, or whatever you want to call it, of their own career and of their life. And they realize that branding is the why and networking is the how. And networking is the vehicle in which they're going to communicate their brand proposition to their target markets. I think that women really step into their power around networking. I think if you're going to follow that brand approach, then an excellent book on that is Reid Hoffman's The Startup of You which yes. really does take that whole idea and pursues it. You know, Whatever you're doing, whether it's your own business, whether you're in a company, treat yourself as a business, as a brand, and how do you drive that forward? Uh, and that's an excellent work on that topic. Hazel, how about you? 
Well, I really think women have to learn to reach out a little further than where they are. Women have a tendency to stay very local in their networks. And they're not always very diverse. They join a lot of women's networks and things. And I'm working on a book called A Woman's Guide to Building a Global Network to teach her to, to stretch her wings and reach around the world because women all over the world have the capacity to encourage and empower one another. If I'm doing a daycare center in Indianapolis, if I can know a daycare center in London and how and we can compare notes, that makes both of us stronger. And it, I know women are newer to the networking than men are, but this global reach and this, this internet really gives us that ability, I think is vitally important to the future of women in business. Andy, do you have any closing thoughts? I think it's been a very interesting discussion and, I, and I'm delighted that, that Hazel and Helen have contributed brilliantly to it. I, I think it's one we're going to come back to time and again on, on the Global Networking Show because there's a lot of different things to talk about here and a lot of different angles to this. Um, we've really literally just scratched the surface today. Um, I, I think, you know, in terms of my closing thoughts, uh, a lot of what we've said is actually very general. So we're talking about differences between the genders, they're clearly there but sometimes it's not so much the difference between two distinct genders as masculine and feminine traits and we have to look at getting the right balance uh, of those those two traits within each of us in, uh, ourselves individually. Um, I, I think that you know talking about how you interact with people at networking events the advice we've heard is good advice generally to just follow whenever you're meeting people whether it's at a networking event or whether it's at any other time when you interact with other people treat them with respect ask them questions listen but when you know you need help if the relationship is right if the relationship is in place don't be frightened to ask for that help um, so I, th I and I think in terms of the growth of, of women only networks yes they, they play a fantastic role but I'm pleased to see that move towards making them more inclusive because without involving men in them uh, as well then you're, you're still unfortunately in some cases finding from the outside so a lot of good stuff and I'm sure we'll come back to it again time and again on the show you know uh, when I've spoken on this topic um, in the public I, I occasionally have people say to me uh, you know I'm a woman, I don't want to act like a man. I'm a man, I don't want to act like a woman. And uh, one of the things I, I say is we're, we're not suggesting, and I love the masculine, feminine versus man versus woman. Um, yeah. One of the things that we're, we're suggesting is that um, it's, it's not like acting like someone else. I, I, can't, I can't act like a woman and, and pull it off. Um, Frank DeRaffley probably Very could. Very fetching. I could not do that. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, it's really a matter of communicating more effectively. There are ways that I as a man can communicate more effectively with a woman and a woman can communicate more effectively with me as a man. And so we're not t suggesting that people change who they are, but simply um, alter the way they communicate in a way that gets more receptive. And it's funny how gender makes people upset, but when you start talking about behavioral styles like drive, influence, steadiness, compliance, and you say you've got to alter your behavioral style to communicate more effectively with another behavioral style, nobody gets upset. They say, well, yeah, well, yeah that's obvious. I think the same applies to gender, I think, uh, and we've talked about that here. Well, look, that's uh, about all we have time for for this edition of the Global Networking Show. I want to thank both Helen and Hazel for joining us. Uh, over the next few months, we're going to be discussing referral strategies, relationship building, and health and networking, uh, amongst a number of other things. Uh, let me just throw in one shameless plug here, Andy, uh, talking about health and networking. I just released uh, last night uh, my book on um, uh, called The Meisner Plan, which is all about health and networking and sort of my journey uh, in um, my health, health issue and and going into remission. So it just went out last night, uh, Meisner, Meisner Plan um, at, on Amazon.com. And best of luck with that, uh, Ivan. You know, I've, I've, I've followed the blog, I've recommended the plan to, to a number of people I've seen in the same uh, position and it's been fantastic to see the success of your journey and, and see how healthy you look when we met up in the UK a couple of months ago. So yeah, Meisner, Meisner Plan, I, from what I've seen of the blog, I very strongly recommend it and, and I wish you the best of luck. Uh, with yeah. that, Ivan. Um, thank you again, uh, Helen and Hazel. I think it's been a really interesting discussion. Uh, if you've just caught part of it, you can catch up with it on YouTube, on Google Hangouts. I will be tidying it all up and editing it over the next few days, and I'll also be uh, 
putting out the podcast which you can get on iTunes so bear with me it is the weekend I want to have a little bit of a break as well but that will be up and out in the next few days uh, please if you haven't done so already follow us on Twitter please tweet about us like our Facebook page and please share it uh, you know Facebook are clamping down on on simple viral spread of Facebook pages now they want paid ads so if you see us post on Facebook on the Facebook page it would really help if you comment on it if you like it just so that we can get the word out there and tell people about the show and if you haven't visited already go and see our website global networking show Dot com, uh, where we have extra resources from our guests, we have archive of past shows, uh, and as soon as we have it, information on shows coming up. So thank you very much. If you're watching live, have a great weekend. If you're watching in the week, have a great week, and we'll see you very soon again on the Global Networking Show. Thanks for watching. <laughs>